So welcome. Today's session uh, is going to be about going exponential. And it's it's something that, you know, is very, very, very important to me because a lot of times we forget the third part of creating, which is action. So, so let's just get some, some real clarity here. Whenever you are creating something that you at all, there's three things. Okay. There's, there's always the end result that you're going for. That's really important. So, so what am I actually going for? The end result. Then there's the now. So there's what have I got now? And so what you think about it, like a blank page, or, you know, you're, you're about to write a book and you're on your first page, or you, you like to have a million dollar business and currently you, you have just debt, or you, you know, you want to be in a great relationship, but, uh, you know, currently you're single. So, so you have these two points of information. Very important to, to understand. Then the, the next thing is that there's an action. Okay, there's an action. So, so there's where you want to, what you want to manifest is where you now, where you are now, and then, then there's, there's an action. And, and that is the most overlooked piece of, of all manifestation and all creation. People can sit there and dream and dream and dream uh, about their end results and get super, uh, you know, romanticize about it and, come up with all these plans and ideas and possibilities and and, and you know that, that's okay and, and others are very good at uh you know just just really getting annoyed at the way their life is now you know they're really good at knowing what it is now but very few people are averse and just taking the action that's necessary you know when it comes to action it is it is probably the most important uh, piece of manifesting, but because of our unconscious agendas or past wounds or everything else, we don't take the action. You know, for example, if if you're out there to create a business and you you know you're doing this business and you know there's someone in your team and your staff that's not right, you might ignore the fact that the obvious action is you need to fire them because you might really like them. Right. And so it's obvious you need to, they're not the right person. Uh, and, and so you don't take the action or you might know that, the, you know, you might know, yeah, I really want to have this, this amazing body and, and, and to look a certain way. And you might know, well, right now I don't look that way. Well, the obvious action is to, you know, is to, to get the, on the right uh, eating plan and, and uh, build some muscle, but, but you don't take it. Most of the, the challenge with creation is about the action. So today I really want to sell you uh, on on action and, and what it what it means and how to create exponential results. So does that sound sound good? That's what we're doing. So I hope it sounds good. Uh, there's there's a few things that I, I want to make sure that you understand is that the action you can either be serving two paths. You can either be serving the path of the end result, or you're serving the wound. You're serving the wound. And so some examples of serving the wound is someone, instead of taking the correct action, they're so scared about not being perfect that they do all sorts of things to try to get everything right so they can't be, they can't be judged. Uh, another, another example is there's an action that needs to take, but if they were to take that action, they feel like they are they are being selfish because they're not spending time with their family. So they don't take the action because now that they can't do this other thing, there's a sacrifice. So instead of taking the action that's needed, they, they, they do that. Uh, you know, it's really important to understand that every single agenda, every single unconscious agenda uh, is in these structures. Last week or two weeks ago, we did the Superconscious Creator course Who's done the superconscious creator course? Who's done that? Yeah, it's it's brilliant. We're gonna we're gonna on the first day of that course uh, of the three day, we do a process around dysfunctional patterns. And last week I had three different people who are in uh, my inner circle program, and and uh, my inner circle program is the small group trainings that we run, uh, very very small, very intimate every second week. And anyway. They told me that the that was the most important thing 
is to understand when they're in their dysfunctional pattern. And to, to put it in simple terms, a dysfunctional pattern is when you consistently take an action or you don't take an action, you ignore taking the obvious action that continually leads you to failure. It's very important, hey, really important to understand this is that there's, there's a correct action that will lead you to where what it is you want to manifest. And then there's what your dysfunction and what your wound uh, tells you the action is. Does that make sense, team? Does that make sense? There's, and there's these two things. A lot of people will know what it is they want to create. They know where they are now, but they're simply not doing it. They're not doing what's needed. They're, you know, there's a, there's a doing. So today we're going to talk a lot about action. And then we're going to do recode and remove resistance to action. So I want to teach you a few rules. For quite a few of you, this will be some revision. Uh, and so the first rule or principle that I want to share with you is the 80-20 uh, principle or rule. Uh, who's heard of the 80-20 rule before? A few of you. Okay, so the 80-20 rule basically says that uh, there's a small minority of causes or inputs that lead to a majority uh, of the results, okay? Now, it, it's like, you know, 20% of the people have 80% of the money. 20% of your clothing, you wear 80% of the time. 20% of your staff make 80% of the revenue, you know, these sort of things. It's not a hard 80-20. Uh, that's just the name of the rule because, uh, you know, and I think about uh, 1900, there was a, an Italian economist uh, who discovered that 20%, I think it was his, his P pods produced 80% of the P's. And, and he then started applying the logic to, to land distribution and found 80% of the land was owned by 20% of the people. And, and this kept on, uh, he kept on looking at this and looking at this, you know, 20% uh, uh, of the food, we eat 80% of the time. So, so it's called the 80-20 um, principle. But actually, it doesn't need to equal 100 and, uh, you know, it could be 99.5, uh, you know, it could be 50-50, it could be, you know, 98.2. The, the, the rule says this, is that some things just matter a heck of a lot more than others. Does that make sense? Like, and, and here's some examples using the 80-20 um, metaphor. 80% of a company's output is produced by 20% of its workers. 80% of social media shares are by 20% of posts. 80% of software glitches are 20% of, of bugs. Do you, so do you see that? It's it's like this, this, this rule. It's this rule. Can I just get, what, what are some examples, just to get some, some um, feedback from you guys. Uh, what are some examples of 80-20 or or, you know, 90, 90, 10 that, that you've seen in your life or that you, you, you might think of, what is, let's have some fun. What are some 80, 20 examples? Because there's a heck of a lot of it. So, so yeah, very nice. Very nice. 80%, 20%. Yeah. Nice, Bojo. I love that. What are some 80, 20 examples? What are some things that you go, okay, 80% uh, of my, uh, you know, my, my food, I eat 20% of the time and, and uh, vice versa. Yeah. So, so we've got to, so we want to make sure that we understand that it's, it's, it's to understand 20% of what you do creates 80% of the result. Thanks, Cheryl. Uh, can I get someone on the team just to see that they're going to contact Cheryl about that? Cheryl, would you just pop your last name in um, so that the team can know exactly who, who which Cheryl that is? So do you see that? So, so we need to make sure we understand is that there's, there's, there's some things that create a lot more of the result than others, right? And this is really important. So for example, in, in, if someone wants to be a good salesperson, okay, if someone wants to be a really good salesperson, there's all these things that they can do, okay? It is, is, so, so Jane, that, you know, that's funny. There's a few of you not quite getting it. It's, it's where a certain amount of the inputs create 
uh, a large uh, amount of the output. So in sales, right? So if you want to be good at sales, people can race off and do all sorts of things in sales. But the number one most important, like the most important thing, the, the most important thing is to establish that the person has a need for your product. And, and establishing that, that a person needs your product is 10 times more important than what you wear or how you smile or, or some silly closing techniques. Do you see that? It's, it's that one thing is so much more important. And if you want to reshape your body, if you want to reshape your body, so if you want to have a body that uh, you know has a different shape, the single most important thing that's more important than anything else is the amount of muscle you have on your body. The amount of muscle you have on your body. The amount of muscle you have on your body is the most important because it turns you either into a calorie burning machine or not. You see that, guys? So it's, it's this one thing that makes such a big difference. Can I get a yes in the chat box if you get it? It's, it's this one little input makes all the bloody difference. And so the, the idea here is to understand is you can do every, you could do 99% of things perfect. But if you miss the, the one or two things that make all the difference, then, then, then you, you, you could still be miles off where you need to be. And this can be very frustrating. It can be very frustrating. So in marketing, you know, something I know a lot about, the most important thing is that you're talking to a starving crowd. That's the most important thing is that you're talking to people who actually, you know, have the problem you can solve. That is like so much more important than how good you are on camera, like so much more important. And what, what can happen is that we can go and do all of these other actions and we're doing all of this activity, but we're not doing the thing that matters. And I've got a, a really, really strong suspicion that, that most of the success isn't in doing everything right. It's doing the right things. It's not doing everything because there's this, there's this rule, there's this law, 20% uh, of the inputs creates 80%. And that is so crucial to understand. You, you know, it's, it's, it's so crucial. Now, here's a, here's a second part to this. So we all established that a small amount of the inputs creates a lot of the outputs. We've established that. It must also be true that the, that the opposite works. Meaning there is a very small amount of inputs that create most of the failure. A very small amount of inputs that create most of the failure, right? Who would agree? Give me a yes if you agree. Well, that must also be true. You know, for example, I know 100% that uh, when it comes to reshaping your body, what causes most failure is not getting enough sleep. That's the thing that causes the, the most, not enough sleep. Crazy. That causes, causes the most, the most fat. So, so it's like understanding this rule helps you to realize, well, it, it, what is the most important thing? And, and the, 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 the interesting thing is, is last night I got to go and have a really, really great time. So uh, my, my business mentor about a year, a year and a half ago, he moved away from the Gold Coast. So I don't get to see him as often and, you know, catch up on the phone a few times a year is not the same. But anyway, he, he was over and uh, I've, been, I've been trying to figure out uh, something for, gosh, maybe a year, a year and a bit. And I hadn't had the moment to talk to him. And uh and I didn't actually know that he knew the answer. And uh, anyway, we went out last night. We had we had a meal together. We had a couple cocktails, and and he gave me the answer. And it was like, it was just one. It's just one thing that that I just go, wow, that's it. And he's like, this is it. And, it, and it's just one thing. And so finding these these uh, these these pieces that make all the difference is going to speed up your success massively massively so so very important is understanding we're going to talk about how to how to find it okay so next next thing 
about action. There's a principle called the Matthew effect, okay? Uh, or the Matthew principle. And it's it, it could be summarized as, uh, you know, the, the old adage of the rich get richer and the poor get poorer, okay? And uh, it, it's a term that was, was coined and takes its name from the parable of talents in, in the gospel of Matthew. So basically the idea is that those who have get more and those that, that don't, uh, you know, lose what the little they actually had, okay? And so this is very interesting, actually. It makes a lot of sense. Inequality is not a function of evil humans. It's a function of this, this rule. So uh, if somebody has somehow been able to get some money, okay, so they, they have some money, and then an opportunity turns up that could make money. Well, that person who has some money can then join in on that opportunity. Uh, then they can make more money. And now they have more, so they can join in on that opportunity and make more money. And so then they are able to have good nutrition and good education for their children who then have more opportunity. And so it, it moves. And if those don't have, well, then they can't go into those same opportunities. So then they miss out, they miss out, they miss out. So, so it just creates this inequality. Now it's the same with confidence. It's the same with confidence. If someone is, is confident, and they, they, they are confident, they turn up confident, well, then what happens is people see them as confident and they're quite successful, so then they feel more confident. It's the same with followers on social media. So if someone has 200,000 social media followers and they do an average post, well, they're going to get maybe, you know, 10% of people, you know, like it or subscribe or whatever. And so then more people are going to be subscribed and then they get more. Whereas someone who only has 1,000 followers does the same post and only gets a slight increase. And, and so the idea of this is that the Matthew effect says, the more you get, the more you get. The more you get, the more you get. And, and it's such an important thing to understand is that the more uh, that you get, so let's use money again, so you, you make a bit of money, well, then you can employ some other people, then they can make you some more, the, you know, and then you get more, and then you get more, and then you get more. The more you get, the more you get. It's called the Matthew effect. It's not based uh, on evil humans. There are evil people out there that create inequality, but, but this is actually a function. It's a real interesting function. You know, that the more happiness that, that you, you feel, the more other happy people want to be around you. So then more happy happens and it grows and grows and grows. And, and so the point is this, is many of us, with, when we, we want to try to go from zero to hero, right? We want to go, right, cool. I'm starting Magnetic Mind. Awesome. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to completely transform my life. But the idea is, is you just got to get some of it and then establish that you have some of it. And then get some more, and then you'll get some more. That that's actually what's what how it works. It does, it, you know, it, it just builds. The key isn't to try to go from um, none to all of it; it's to go from none to some. Now, again, with the Matthew effect, it works in both ways. So, if you go into more negativity, then you have more, and then more, and you lose what little you already had. So if we look at the first two principles, um, the first principle establishes that some things, some actions matter a heck of a lot more than others. The second thing establishes that you just have to get some. True? You guys, you just have to get some. And as long as you start getting some, then, then you're going to be able to get more of it and more of it. And you just, as long as you're in momentum, as long as you're moving forward, you'll, you end up uh, getting more and more and more. So, so very good. So uh, two good principles, very good principles. Okay, the, the next principle is actually a universal uh, law, uh, and it's, uh, it's called the Fibonacci sequence. Who's heard of the Fibonacci sequence? Yeah. So let me bring up my screen. Uh, we, teach this, we teach this in mastery uh, as well in uh, the creator course. 
So let me just press play on this. Can you guys um, see my screen? Can someone type in screen if they can see my screen? All right, cool. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So the Fibonacci, oops, the Fibonacci sequence, this is straight out of creator course. Uh, really important to understand is that th this famous sequence is everywhere in nature. Okay. Uh, and so here's, here's how it works. It starts at zero and then it goes to one and then it goes to one again, and then two, then three, then five, then eight, then 13. It adds on the number before to the existing number. You see that? So zero, one, then, you know, one plus one is it's one. So then it adds the next one, two, then adds the next one, three adds the next one. Okay. Can you guys, oops. Can you guys see that? There we go. So here's, here's actually uh, where you see it in nature. So this is how, uh, you know, flower petals, they literally follow the sequence. It's so fascinating. They, they build on itself. Same with seed heads. Um, same with tree branches. It starts with one branch. The next lot will have two branches. Then the next will be three. Then the next will be, be five. And in this picture, if they actually put another line in here, it would have gone one, one. It, it works if you square the growth of a shell. It works when you square the growth of the shell. Okay, so, so it's how things grow. It's in our bodies, our faces uh, do this. It's also understanding in reproductive dynamics, we have this happen as well. So what, what's interesting, oops, where have I gone? There I am. What's interesting about this is that there is a universal intellectual mathematically observed ratio of how something grows into being. How it grows into being. And it's exponential. It's exponential, right? So the growth of this goes... Can you guys see my screen? Maybe I'll bring you forward a bit. It goes um, one. Can you guys see that? Yeah, it goes one, one, two, three, five, and then eight. And so the gap here is one. The gap here is one. The gap here is two. The gap here, uh, is, well, we actually made a mistake there. So the gap there is one. The gap there is one. Then the gap here is two and then three. So you see it starts to grow. The next one is 13. So the next one is five. So it looks like this, right? The, the growth, the growth is just exponential. So it goes, you know, little and then gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And that, my friends, is something that us as creators always forget. Who always forgets Fibonacci? Is it just me? I always forget an exponential. I always think linear because I'm a stupid human. <laughs> right? I just always forget that it's exponential and that at the beginning, it looks like nothing. And then it grows. We forget that every time you learn something, it adds a block to your learning. And then as that gets added, then the next thing gets added and you don't have to do what you've already done. So if you put it in a business, you know, the first thing is, you, you, you know, you, you understand what it is that you do. So now you've done, now you get your marketing or your website. Well, now that's done. And now you get a salesperson or a marketer. And eventually, because you've got so many things there, it just grows. Same with your health. You might just start off one-to-one. -one. Just get your eating right. Then once you get your eating right, you might start walking in the morning. And then once you start walking in the morning, well, then you might start doing some weights. Does that make sense, everybody? It's like it, it builds. 
And so what we forget consistently as creators is that we get, we go, well, I need to take this action, but this action seems trivial or oh, I want this huge jump. And it's like, well, actually the jump, the big growth is going to happen by you consistently showing up and just knocking over the next small growth. One, one, two, three, and then eventually you get there. Does that make sense? So if we, if we look at the establishment of these, these first three principles, it's that you're starting to build a good mental model of action, right? The first one says some things matter more than others, okay? So find out what the heck those things are. The second thing says, Matthew effect says, well, as soon as you get some of it, you, you know, then you're likely to get more of it. Cool, so start having some of it, small. The next thing says, look, it's going to be exponential, but look, it takes a while. And then that's just what we see in nature. It takes a while. You know, the, if, you, if you actually keep examining out the Fibonacci sequence, it, it goes, you know, five, then 13, and then it goes to 21. And then the jump goes to 34 and then 55 and then 89 and then 140 something, I guess. So it starts to create these huge jumps for the same time period. Very important, very important to, to see it because that is a universal principle. That is how we grow. That's how we turn into a human. Uh, it, it's what you see everywhere. So really, really crucial. The last thing about action that I want to, to cover before we do recode, the last thing about action is, where is it? I do have the last thing about action is that you must allow yourself to, to take whatever action seems obvious and, and be in a positive reinforcing loop. Okay. A positive reinforcing loop. The positive reinforcing loop works like this. You have an end result. You take an action towards that end result. That end result either moves you towards what it is that you want or it doesn't. If it does, then you learn that you, you take in the right action. And if it doesn't, which we call failure, you learn that that wasn't the right action and you need to get a different action. The quicker that you can get in this feedback loop of that's what I want, take this action, notice if I'm getting there, take the action or not, the quicker that you will turn up the momentum. The positive reinforcing loop, it's a, it's, it's just massive here. Let me show you the, the visual I've got here. So, this, this one here says the action creates a result which increases the amount of potential action you can take. So for example, with money, you have some money, it earns interest, which means you have more money to earn more interest, which means you have more money and it starts to cycle. In health, you exercise, which is, increases your strength and muscle, which then increases the amount of output or calorie burn which means you can do more exercise, more muscle, more exercise, more. And so that just expands. For all of us, this bottom one here, the learning loop, we, we, we have it, we take an action, it gives us a result. The result is either good or bad, feeds it back. We learn, do I take that action or choose a different one? You see, this here, the, the quicker you can get out of your own way and just get into the learning loop, the quicker you're going to create absolutely magical um, results. Does that make sense? The quicker you go, you know what? Uh, this is this is the action I think is right. I'm going to take it. I'm going to notice whether or not it works. Learn, get back in my result, take a different action, and the the more you can you can go. People always ask me about my business, and um, I haven't seen anyone do it yet. They say, Chris, you know, how did you do it? How did you grow this? You know, basically unicorn personal development company like it's incredible how did you do it and I, and I say well honestly I did a webinar every single day for about two years 
every day. And they go, every day? And I go, well, you know, I took weekends off. Go, okay, cool. So, so I was doing 20 webinars a month, the same webinar. They would say, the, the same webinar. And so if I was doing 20 webinars in a month, I got 20 feedback loops done in a month. Most people wouldn't even do 12, one a month in a whole year. And so they, they don't get the feedback, right? So I get a year's worth of learning, well, a year and a half for most people in a month. Does that make sense? Like my feedback was so fast. Like I took the action, noticed what worked, what didn't, took the action, noticed what worked. It's not that I'm smart. I just learned faster. I just did more, right? I just did more. Bang, 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 bang. Webinar, 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 webinar. Some people had, some of the webinars had two people on it. Some people had, some of them had 20. Sometimes I had five people. I was just happy there was more than one. And that's what I did. Bang, 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 bang. And I kept going. And so if you, if you put this all together, Right, these four principles. If, if you put these four principles together, you, I hope I've sold you on, on a few things. So, so four principles. First, the Pareto principle is some things, some actions matter way more than others. Right? Way more than others to create success or failure. True? You need to find those actions. You need to um, use your intuition. You need to ask people who are already uh, having what it is you've got uh, that you want to create. But you need to know what actions matter the most for success and what actions matter the most um, for failure. You just need to know. You don't need to be perfect. You don't need to know everything. You just need to know that. The second is you absolutely must start getting some of what it is you want to create. If you want to have abundance, start finding abundance now. You can find abundance by going for a walk or having a meditation or, or, a, or a cup of tea or, or a, a warm bath. You can find the feeling of abundance. You can find the feeling of health. Start feeling a little bit of it now. Start feeling a little bit of it now because the Matthew fix is as soon as you start feeling it, you'll get more of it. Be it to see it. Start getting a small amount now. True? Just start getting some. Some. Find a way that you can experience that. You know what? My, uh, you know, I, I may have a lot of dishealth in my life, but 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 this part of me is healthy. And look how I appreciate and focus on that. Start getting some. The the next thing is is to understand is, is Fibonacci is that things aren't linear. And the last is, is allow yourself to get feedback fast, far out. The amount of us that are so caught up in our unconscious uh, agendas, we don't just take, take the action full flat in our face and, and learn again and learn and learn and learn and learn and go and go and go, that we, we, we limit our creative ability. So, so... Who thinks those are some pretty good principles to uh, to take with you? So I started off today by saying that uh, we're either on the superconscious creative path or we're in, we're in a path focused on our unconscious agenda. We know a structure is made up of three things, where we're going, where we are now, and what we need to do. And this is why our five steps work so bloody well. That's why our five steps work so well. And so the, the first step is to, to choose a true goal. So you get into the end result of, of what it is you really want to create. Okay. That is the first thing. The second is you then create structural tension by noticing the now. Okay. So that sets up the first two points of any structure. So you set that up. Then what you do is the third step here says get into the emotion of the end result. So now you know, okay, this is where I'm going to go. This is where I am now. You get into the emotion of having it and you ask yourself, well, what's the next action to take? What's the next action to take? That there gives you the right structure. Now, the fourth step is what we'll, we'll do is we unplug and recode, which means you need to take whatever action that is. If someone has what you want to create and they say, 
wake up every day and do 100 push-ups, if that's the action, then you need to take that action. If someone says you need to, you need to do this or do that, if, if that's the action, you need to take the bloody action. And so a lot of times we get caught up in not going and doing it or taking it. And we have all of these reasons and stories and fears and worries and blah, 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 blah. We need to let go of the blah, 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 right? We need to, we need to let that go. And so that's what the fourth step is. The fourth step says, get, let that go. And the last step says, take the action. The last step is action. You take the bloody action. And now taking the action doesn't mean that uh, you get the result. It means that you've taken the action and you're in the right structure. You're on the journey to the result. But, but maybe the feedback is that um, you don't have the right skills. You get the feedback that you took the result, but you need to practice more or that, it's, that you, know, you need to refine some things. It's okay. But but you but you you're in the right structure. You're doing everything that's possible. You, you're taking it. You're in it. You're emotionally connected. You're going for it. And and uh, the last thing to be said before we do recode is you're either in that creative structure and taking that action, or you're not. It's like being pregnant. You are or you're not. There's nothing else. It's, it, it, there's nothing. You either are or not. So you're either in it, or you're, you're in your dysfunction. There's no other way. So we'll do um we'll, we'll do a choice together, hey. So so the the way to do that is uh, let's all work on uh, a choice together, something that you'd like to create. And uh, so when you've when you've chosen what you'd like to work on with me today, put a one in the chat box. So if you're brand new, you might choose one of the core four choices, which is a choice that we all have. And uh, the core four choices are I choose a life I love, uh, I choose to be the predominant creative force in my life, or I choose health and vitality, uh, or I choose to uh, true nature and purpose, live my true nature and purpose. Okay, so uh, go ahead and, uh, and just choose one choice. We always work on one because, look, time is the river that we're flowing through. And what we're doing is we're saying, well, this is the this is what I want to be able to flow to. I know the river's flowing. I want to have nothing stopping me going to that. So we choose it. So just give me number one when you're there. Cool. And obviously, um, you got heaps of time in, in the course to work on as many sessions as you like. So that's the first step, as you say, that's that's where I'm going to end up. Okay, great. So compared to that, just what's it like now? What's it like now? So compared to that, what's it like now? So acknowledge what is it like now? Okay, well, that's what I would like right now. It's like this. And you, all you have to do is acknowledge it. You know your current reality, but you say, that's what I'm going to create. This is the now. And that's what it is. This is this is the now. And you just you just acknowledge it. You say, well, this is this is how it is now. You know, I'm not taking the action or I'm on I'm in momentum or I'm I'm whatever. It's just this is the now. That's all right, Joey. See you next time. Cool. So just acknowledge it. It's just this is the now. This is this is it. And and the now is actually your most current version of the past. It's your, it's your most up to date creation. So now, when you're ready, just just close your eyes, okay, and and step into that choice that you're creating. So, with your eyes closed, just say in your mind, "I choose the end result of," and, and make the choice. And as you make the choice, allow yourself to find a point in the future where you have already created this choice. In your mind, connect with that future memory. Step into the body of the you that has already created this. 
and notice what it is like in that moment. How does it feel to be in the body of the you that has already created this? Feel it now. Notice what you see. Notice who's around you. Build a full sensory experience of how it's going to be when you have already created this result and allow yourself to feel it. Very nice. Now from this point, turn around in your mind and look back at the you in the current reality. What is the obvious action? What does that you need to do? Let go of or become in order to move towards this result. And just take instruction from the future you when you're ready, open your eyes, come back. Cool. So, so that's what you're creating and, and that's what you need to do. And if you don't know what it is that you need to do, well, then you need to blim and ask someone what you should do who, who's already created it. Isn't that funny? So, well, if you don't know what to do, well, good. That's the action is to find out what you should do. That's literally your superconscious giving you the action. Oh, I don't know what it is. Well, good. That's what you need to do then. You need to figure out what to do.